This is Stevie Van 4LQ. I'm going to show you how I make uh, common mode chokes. The common mode currents are currents that show up on the outside shield of the coax cable. And they can come from the antenna, they can come from the transmitter, they can actually be picked up from radiation from the antenna and show up on the cable. There's a lot of reason that they are there. And you don't want them in your shack because they can interfere with the uh, operation of your transceiver. They can make it do some nutty things. Uh, they can put uh, clicks on your speaker and uh, make your meters read crazy, all kinds of things. <clears throat> well, you can go out and buy these common mode chokes from different people. Lot, just about all the ham radio companies sell uh, common mode chokes anywhere from 40 to $300. I've got one here that sold for that. And none of them are as good as this. None, none of them have, have as much choking impedance as these do. And this is really simple. And... Uh, this core, this ferrite core, is uh, 2.4 inches in diameter, so we call it a 240 core. It's ferrite, and the ferrite mixture is 31 mix. And that'll cover from 160 up through 10 meters just fine. And also, you can put them in series. So I can come along here and start another wind through another core and put two of these in series and that doubles the uh, impedance. So the higher frequencies you don't need as, as many turns. For instance, 20 meters, you may only need six or, uh, six or eight turns, but for 160 and 80, you wanna have oh, 12 would be uh, a good number to have. So what I did for, first was put the coax through here and wrap it around one time and uh, tightened it down with uh, some wire ties so I could work on it. And then I started, of course these have connectors on it, but there's plenty of room to go through here. Um, I got 15 turns on here one time. I didn't like it cause it was, they were starting to overlap. So I backed off and now at 12 turns and that's plenty That'll give you plenty of impedance for 160 meters. These are just uh, UV, UV resistant uh, wire ties that I picked up at Lowe's. And, uh, and the thing is actually weatherproof. There's absolutely no reason to put it in a box. Uh, I mean, this is just regular coax cable and the ferrite core is, uh, it's not conductive. Uh, you can stick an ohmmeter probe between two points on that core and you won't get any conductivity at all. It's like infinite resistance. So you have nothing to worry about as far as it's shorting out. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's wet. Well, I suppose if it got encased in snow about, uh, you know, several inches thick, it may not be as effective. But anyway, the only thing you want to try to do try to keep the ends apart you know because otherwise you'll end up with the capacity of coupling between the input and the output so just try to leave a little gap right there and that's good enough and this is a pre-made jumper that I bought somewhere it's been around for years um, it's clear but you know black coax works just as well this is RG8 X or RG8 mini coax. Its power rating, um, it depends on the frequency that you're operating on. Uh, they say about 300 watts at 30 megahertz, and then it goes up as you go down, and um, it's on 80 meters, you could probably probably run full legal power through it and get by with it. It'd probably get a little bit warm though it's 
was small for handling that much current. But uh, obviously you can't wrap RG213 through there. The uh, coax for high power, the best coax would be RG400. And it's Teflon. It's smaller, much smaller than this. And it's pretty stiff. But you can go on eBay and find pre-made sections of RG400. Uh, that stuff will handle uh, about six thousand watts easily so it you know but it's but it's expensive like i said but this stuff you can just pick this up at a hand fest i'm just going to use this particular one between my rig and the amplifier just to be sure that i keep all the rfi out of the rig make it quieter so um, like i said you can wind another one maybe give yourself a six inches or a foot or so and start another one and maybe make it uh, eight or ten turns instead of 12 because you really that would give you a kind of a, a balance across the hf spectrum and you're going to end up with several thousand ohms of impede or of, uh, induct impedance yes impedance and uh, if you want to learn more about these Go to uh, K9YC. His web page has uh, tons of information about RF chokes. Now you can do this with a power cord, your DC power cable, your speaker wires, whatever. These cores are usually around five bucks a piece. And of course, like I said, the more of them you put in series, the higher the uh, higher the uh, impedance. So, I've got a web page open right here. Maybe you can see this. This is the Ferrite Company. That's who makes it, Ferrite Corporation. Um, now, there it is, fair Right Products. And they call this a round cable EMI suppression core. And there's the part number right here. And... Uh, you can put that in Google and find it in a lot of a lot of places. Um, here is DigiKey, and DigiKey has 2,199 of these in stock, and uh, they are um, six dollars and twenty nine cents a piece. So they're a little higher than other places. I've seen them on uh, Amazon, I've seen them on eBay for like fifteen dollars. So there's some, or I've seen them for $18 on eBay. So there's some rip-offs out there, so be careful. Uh, Mouser, Newark, Arrow, they all carry these things. And the amount of stock will vary anywhere from zero to thousands. So order yourself a pile of these things. Uh, you get a price break here at, at $10, uh, $5.35 if you order 10 of them and use them on everything and that'll keep all the rf out of everything now you can put one of these um, outside your shack where your coax comes in you can put it up at the antenna like for a dipole this would actually be a um, oh some people call them a, a ballon but actually what it's doing the function of a ballon for just a half wave dipole Put it right up against the um, center conductor up there, and uh, you can actually just wrap the same coax through there that you run down to your shack. Uh, for a, an off-center fed like a Wyndham, they, they're good for that. Um, just put one down below the, uh, the existing uh, ballon. I mean, it's, you can't have too many of them. And um, I use it on my in-fed halfway. I got one down here before the coax comes in the shack, and I also have one of these uh, made out of RG400 um, up close to the transformer. It's uh, actually 0.05 wavelength, which on 80 meters, that's about 17 feet from the transformer. That's the ideal <clears throat> place to put it. That gives you just enough... Uh, uh, 
uh, counterpoised action there from the shield to take care of the in-fed half-wave antenna. And uh, if you're just going to run, uh, you know, your usual 100-watt transceiver, then RG8 uh, Mini or X is just fine. That's all you need. And if you're going to run high power, go to eBay and look up RG400 jumpers or pre-made cables. You can get those with um, a male on one end, female on the other, and you can you can hook the uh, plug the female into your transformer. Of course, this part would be 17 feet long, and uh, the other end's got a a, uh, a male on it, so you could plug your uh, coax into that, and you could probably use some strain relief. And if you you're worried about water egress, you can just wrap some uh, shrink tape around there or some uh, coax seal. There you go. Um, and when you get to your last turn here, I just wrap another uh, tie wrap across there, pull it good and tight with the pliers, and there you are. It's going to hold a tremendous amount of weight. It's going to be as strong as the coax. Indoor, outdoor, wherever you need it, that'll work. And it's a lot cheaper and much better than your $100 chokes that you get from the web. 73s in 4LQ.